Hello everybody! Today I want to showcase something very special. See, I've been playing around with this really cool mod, you probably heard of it, called Create Mod. And if you haven't heard of it, because you live under a rock, basically what it is is it adds a bunch of mechanical components to the game. I've been playing around with this mod for a couple of days, and specifically the vehicle aspect of it. Because there's another add-on, I'm probably going to mispronounce it, called Valkyrie in Skies, something like that, IDK, I don't know bruh, something like that, which is a physics engine that works with Create, so you can build your own airships, planes, cars, and stuff like that. And you know, I was building like, basic planes and stuff, whatever, it was like, but then that got boring, I wanted to make something cool, and so I came up with something awesome. And what I, what I want to showcase today is this plane right here. See, they, it looks like a standard plane. It's got two big propellers. It's got decent wingspan and some, some flaps and, you know, regular plane stuff. But what is cool is you'll notice that there's this weird mechanism right here and we have what is called a physics bearing. And what that allows me to do, so I'll just break the lever. We can shift this to vertical. It's based off of a Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey, which it, it very loosely, if you look at this diagram, very loosely. So obviously we have the VTOL mechanism right here, which is controlled via this lever. I didn't make it a controller input, because then you, in order to switch modes, you'd have to like hold down shift, and that just is not fun, or shift or space or whatever I set it to. I I decided to just use the regular linked controller instead of the tweaked controller because it, it's just giving me less problems. The tweaked controller is a little bit more buggy. Okay, so here's the moment you've been waiting for, how the VTOL works. So we have, we have the physics bearing. The physics bearing is attached to this block, which is its own separate physics entity. And in the original design, we had casing, I had casing that went all the way along here but then I couldn't put as many wings here. So I figured out if you break it, these guys are still connected. And we have we have a sequence gear shift that's set to turn it 125 degrees. I don't know why I settled on 125, it's just what worked. Physics objects don't like to be, don't like to behave is one way to put it. So like, just, just for an example, let's say I, let's say this, this is a physics object right here. Let's turn it into one. Want it to rotate? That, that's fine, it will rotate. But it's also affected by weight, which is not good. Because then, to get the movements you want, you have to kind of find the state of equilibrium. And it's, it's, just, it's just a hassle to deal with. Especially if you run into something, it's going to shift out of alignment. It's going to be real annoying. So what I discovered is you can actually force these guys to shift into like a regular 90 degree angle or like have it be flat with each other if you use a piston all you have to do is hit it with a piston and it it realigns and it it, it doesn't matter how the weight is distributed it's nothing's going to change that like it's going to start to shift down hit the piston, it's gonna go back to its closest flat degree. I don't really know how to explain that properly. I use this mechanic to my advantage when designing these wings. Notice how whenever it flips, these pistons go out and back in. So underneath these copycat layers, we have redstone torches that are constantly powering these unless we receive a signal from, from this guy right here, which will extend the signal. So whenever this, this lever powers the the brass casing signal right here and this goes to power I haven't explained this yet I'll explain this in a second so the brass casing goes and whenever the observer detects that the signals change because whenever the levers flick the, the light here turns off and it looks different observer sends this redstone signal over here which powers this and since it's only a fraction of an, a second, this thing extends the signal. I forget what it's called. It's literally called a pulse extender. I'm so smart. This pulse extender powers for a certain set amount of time, which lets these guys turn off all while powering the sequence gear shift. Now that that's great and all, but one of the core fundamentals of this thing is it needs to shift back. The original system I had, it was a two-step two process. You had to flick your lever to select if this inverter was on or not, and then you had to hit the button. So that's why there's this complicated system down here. It's really not that complicated, whatever. The, this thing 
will either always will be powering the inverter on or off depending on well, the lever's gone now but depending on which way the lever is this inverter will set it to the proper up or down position while also setting a, the signal to activate it which was a problem I, I spent a little bit of time on there's also oh that's it's kind of glitchy there's this very simplistic bay door I don't know a lot about create to really make it good so I just stuck on hand uh, on hand cranks very basic very simple if you're watching this video you've probably seen other create content so you don't really need to know how the how like the plane flies you you, you probably you've seen how a flat bearing works before I'm assuming if not, there's plenty of simple tutorials. I recommend you go look them up. They were very helpful when learning how to use this mod. So that's how the flip mechanism works. But what what's this? Because this, this was more of an aesthetic choice than anything. So we have this redstone resistor, which when powered, depending on the strength of the signal, will reduce the, the output signal. And a lot of things that all these create vehicles have is that when, when you're not moving, the fans are just off, and that's that's not how um, aircrafts work in real real life most of the times. Usually, when they're on standby, the fans are they're kind of going just just a little bit. They're the engines are warmed up, they're ready to take off and fly. And so I wanted to recreate this, and so instead of just having a clutch here and a singular one of these, there's actually a two-step process this thing goes through. So to get this effect right here. The default controls, whenever you hit the space bar, the this thing, the fans turn on. Like that's very very easy, very simple. And so the space bar is actually set to this block right here, which invert has a redstone torch in order to invert the signal. So whenever you hit the space bar, instead of activating a clutch, it's actually shutting off the resistor instead to allow it to spin at full speed. And it gets this nice little I don't really know if it's an illusion or whatever, but it just gets this nice little feeling to make the aircraft more alive. Which, uh, I, I, this thing really isn't supposed to get points for realism, seeing as we're using create motors, it's not survival friendly in the slightest. If you want it to be survival friendly, please consider subscribing. That would, uh, that would incentivize me to spend some painful hours working on this to make it actually buildable in survival mode, even though I wouldn't ever try to build it in survival mode, because I'm much more of a creative person. You probably notice this giant gyroscope, it's kind of hard to miss. And you also notice it's its not active right now, and that's for very good reason. I wanted to recreate normal plane flight, but whenever it's in helicopter mode, the weight distribution just wasn't working right, it just kept tipping. And so let me just turn this off. So whenever it's in vertical mode, the gyroscope powers up and turns on. And basically this thing that activates the inverter is also powering this clutch right here, which will tell, it's basically, it's telling the device, oh, we are, we are in helicopter mode. So we want to stay stable no matter what. And so functioning by this logic, you get this really stable helicopter flight. Like, see, it's not gonna turn, it's not gonna do anything. You, you lose some realism points right here because of it, because when, when you're in this mode, you can't really turn, you can't do anything because I, since I'm using only the normal link controller, there's not enough buttons to make rudder control work, so I couldn't get steering to function quite correctly. But this bay door is also really bad, don't judge me. But that's what this does. This is kind of just to make it actually flyable. We'll fly it in a second, I'll show you. It's kind of the last thing. I added it just before I started recording. You, when you're in the air in helicopter mode, if you switch suddenly, there's no way to slow down. So I just put a very simple thruster and brake mechanism, and this, you hit shift, it will kind of activate. It's not strong enough to move the plane on its own, so it's only meant as a brake. Alright, well, now that I've shown you around the ship, why not take it for a test flight? So I have the controller right here, but I also have, since I was in creative mode, I have a copy of it. It's best to fly it with it in your offhand, since you can still interact with levers without disengaging controls and stuff and so it just it just makes all the difference so in order to fly this thing you activate the thrusters that for me that's the space bar you start getting some height you know it's climbing pretty well and then this is a key step because this will break it you have to let go of the thrust and then switch it because if you change while you're holding the thrust the system will move incorrectly and 
it will stay upwards, but the gyroscope will disable because it thinks that it's in airplane flight mode. And so now you can kind of just fly this thing like a normal airplane. It's pretty nice. It handles pretty well. I made sure the flaps were big enough to give it just the right sense of control. You can do rolls and stuff. And then let's say you're ready to land. You just bring it about, turn off your thrusters, flick the lever, and then kind of just bring yourself in ever so slightly, have the brake going, and boom, you've landed your VTOL aircraft. See, this thing is just really cool, because you can have a normal plane, which, you, you, I don't know, you try to make it go really fast, but for here, I just decided to focus on the functionality of it, rather than speed, and I tried to make it look good. I'm not the greatest builder, but I think it came out really good. Oh, see, here's an example. I ac I forgot to let go of the thrust, and it's not in its exact alignment. It might fix itself. Yep, there we go. Sometimes you just have to dip, and it will fix itself, but you have to be careful, or else you kind of have to just play around with it until it re-enters alignment. Well, that kind of just a brief showcase. This is a different style of video than what I normally do, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, anything you'd like me to try to build, no, I don't know if I can actually do it because this was a very hard build for me. Um, but if you have any suggestions, let me know. I'd be happy to hear them and try them out. If you have any suggestions on how to improve the design on this ship, I'd also like to hear those. And I hope you have a fabulous day. See ya!